Welcome to Your Town. I'm Marianne Leffel. I'm your host for today, and I'm really excited to talk about one of my favorite cities in the region, a city that's definitely on the move. And the person who's actually pushing it a lot in movement is with us today, Gloria Stearns, Economic Development Director, City of Seaside. Gloria, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. So I'm pretty fascinated by your uh, background because you didn't just start in cities and planning and, and economic development. You started a whole other pathway. I sure did, and I, I'm surprised as much as you are to end up in that role. Um, I started out in business, and I actually worked in IT for about 17 years. And I was one of those girls who was on the plane, flying around, developing business and everything. But as you can imagine, that's a stressful role, and I decided there's got to be more to life than that. So I went back to school for landscape architecture, and then I did a master's in urban planning, and I've been working on cities since then. So it's kind of fun. It's, it, it takes, though, I mean, everything revolves around IT right now. So if you've got that background, it really gives you a good base to be able to produce and do things and not rely on other people sometimes. Um, and that's a, not a bad thing. Well, it's also nice to see like how you can use technology to help people participate in government. So we've been doing more electronic things since we got to Seaside. And, and I say we because we have a good team backing me up. It's, it's a whole bunch of us working on things, and there's some great staff back there. Um, we do things like outreach to people in the public through uh, surveys, online surveys, web, Twitter feeds, everything. And so we're getting more people participating in government these days than ever before. And it's kind of fun because they're actually helping design the city. And that's what it should be. Right. You know, the people who are going to live there and use it should have a say. So, and I, I think we're seeing more of that throughout the region where the citizens are involved. Um, slows the process down. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it makes it a little faster, and I'll give you an example. So just last week, Friday, we had a discussion about what if Seaside did a possible courthouse and new um, city hall up at the very top of Broadway in General Gym. And so we had these consultants come in, and we put the word out to the people, you know, that come to my office, which is down on Broadway now, so we've relocated to Broadway and join us and tell these consultants what's going on and, and I'll buy you some pizza along the way. Sixty people showed up for a meeting on Friday noon to talk about this possible design of the city. It was really exciting and energetic. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. You know, um, so I came to the city visioning um, meetings about a year, a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And they were like 150 people at each one and people were obviously very engaged when you had to get up and give your opinion, they put their dots and spoke, and I like that. I think it's important. I think an interesting thing is, and I stopped going because someone made a comment about I did not live in Seaside, so I probably needed not to be there. And I thought about it, and I thought, you know what, it's probably true. I Some of this needs to be sorted out by the citizens who live here, although we are regional, and I do not believe in my heart that anybody that goes to work in the morning knows that they crossed a boundary between one city and another. All they care about is that they've got a good place to live, good schools, and that they have a job. And it doesn't really matter if they drive two minutes down the road and are in the adjacent city. Um, it's, it's all about the life that we lead. Right. And I think the cooperation among cities is a big deal, too. I think that's something you're seeing happen more often and more frequently. Cities are reaching out to each other to talk about things. How can we work together on, and you name a topic. And that's a very frequent thing these days. It wasn't that way even so much as two years ago. It was a little bit that way, but I think everybody's realizing that we're stronger together, and I believe that in this region. No, I think it's really, really good. You know, since I've lived here, and I lived here since before the Fort Ord um, closure, mm -hmm. so I saw the population of Seaside change immensely and drop like crazy. But it has stabilized. It doesn't really seem to 
to grow. Are you projecting quite a bit of growth in the next few years? We are, and, and what's interesting is some of the demographics of where we're looking to grow, and, and our consultants will tell you that our population's gonna grow a little older, but I'm gonna disagree with our consultants, and here's why. What I actually see are more young families moving into Seaside. They like the prices of our housing, they like the farmer's market going on down on Broadway, they like um, seeing that there's going to be amenities and restaurants that are popping up. We have over 77 restaurants and more every day coming in. They like those things, and, and we have a good, solid school system, so they're coming. I think that's gonna be our demographic that's growing. And I would agree with you, because when you drive down uh, Fremont particularly, uh, you see young families with babies in strollers. You see more strollers <laughs> in Seaside than you see any place else anywhere in the region until you get down into South County. There are definitely people that are out walking around. They take walks in the evening. They walk down to the markets and get, walk down to get an ice cream and to do things. It's invigorating. It's fun. It is, and that's one thing that I really like is I sort of measure the success of a city by seeing how many people are on your streets in the evening. That means they feel safe, that means there's things for them to do, and they're happy, you know, and that's what you want to have is a fun, happy city. So let's talk just a second about Farmer's Market because it has just really exploded over there. It's uh, You've got tons of stuff for people to do. I bought some flowers in there about three weeks ago, and they were beautiful and they lasted just about two weeks which for cut flowers is pretty amazing especially oh. at my house <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have that problem from time to time <laughs> yeah our farmers market is really good um, it's a certified farmers market and we actually work with everyone's harvest on that and so they go out and they recruit different vendors and we try to get as local as possible for different things um, but it was really nice when we talked to them about adding stuff. They added a stone fruit vendor. So when people tell us what they want, we try to get those things. They have a gluten-free vendor that they've added now. So there's baked goods. Um, there's food vendors. There's the vegetable and produce vendors. I mean, there's all sorts of things going on. We also have um, programming during the farmer's market. So there are times that we have special events within the farmer's market itself. So we have a chef, for example, who comes and he goes shopping before he does his demo and he'll make something with what he bought that day. And people sit down and, and they watch him do his cooking right there on the street. And then they can disperse back to the vendors that he purchased from. Oh, exactly, exactly. And, and buy what he bought so they can go home yeah. and try it, right? Yeah, exactly, and that's, that. what, that's what I did. And here's the great thing, I was doing that with none other than the mayor of San City. We were both picking out our vegetables and making that same recipe that we saw that day and buying our veggies and we were cooking that that night. That's pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. Next time you're doing that, you can invite me. I'll do that. <laughs> Every, everybody should come down because the, <laughs> chef, the chef one is pretty popular, and, and he likes to do it too, so that's a lot of fun. So shout out to our chef for doing that. Thank you. Um, and then also we have different fun events that happen during farmer's markets. So we had the county health people there demonstrating the smoothie bike, you know, so the importance of healthy eating and giving you nutrition facts and how to incorporate fresh food um, into your diet. One of the biggest successes, though, that people don't realize with the Certified Farmer's Market is the impact it's had on the community. And this is sort of the behind the curtain hidden fact of what's really going on, is in our community, doctors are writing prescriptions for people to eat more vegetables. And so they get these coupons and they can go down to the farmer's market and they get like $10 worth of free produce. And we did the math, but I forget how much it is, but it's been thousands, if not tens of thousands of carrots. And we use carrots as an example of how much produce we've given away to yeah. get the community healthier. And I think that's a good thing. So people out walking, people eating more vegetables, you have a healthier community. Well, and if you just think about walking from one end to a farmer's market to another, increases the amount of steps people are taking even if they don't buy any of the food they're getting as you say fresh air and they're getting some walking in and it's mingling it's socialization as opposed to sitting somewhere by yourself uh, looking at a tiny screen so it's just I think it's a great way to get people out and about and was a great way to showcase what you were doing down on Broadway right I think the thing too that I like about the farmers market is Seaside is very multicultural and our farmers market attracts all of the cultures. We can all, you know, unite around fresh, healthy food. 
and, and you see that, and that's the great part about the farmer's market. And then plus, I'm always happy when people are walking by our new businesses that are down there too, so that helps them. You know, it's a great way to discover what's going on and what came in um, during the remodel. So that looks great, by the way. Broadway looks really, really good. It was uh, painful <laughs> right. to get there. right? <laughs> but I think the outcome is well worth it. And I, everyone I talk to talks about how much easier it is to, to drive there. And if you're going to uh, frequent a business there, to be able to pull in and stop. And so it's more inviting. Yeah, I think it's definitely eye-catching. Our engineering staff just won an award, so they actually won two. One was a state-level award, and one was a national award from the American Public Works Association for their work on Broadway. So they're getting shout-outs and recognition for the transition, and this is really anchoring a downtown. We didn't have a place where people could do events, where businesses were really congregating, you know, and, and putting a concerted effort into upgrading the city. And I think that's what you're starting to see, is people are investing on Broadway. And it's really a proud moment to see how that's starting to change. No, it really is. So do you have any vacancies there right now? There's a few. And here's the thing. There's only a few. People will walk by and they'll say, but, but. And here's my caveat to that. There's new businesses coming in. In fact, we've been setting records with how many businesses are coming in. I have an employee that's worked in our department for 26 years. And he said he's never seen this many businesses coming in. So Broadway is hopping. As soon as a business goes up for sale, they're being purchased, and they're being purchased at prices that just keep increasing. But we're getting a fun mix of businesses now, too. So there are things that people might want to do. So if you're walking down the street, there are businesses that you want to stop in and visit. And that's what we're starting to see is that type of investment. Well, and I think it's really important when you see that people from out of Seaside have come in and chosen that as a place to put their money and their ideas. That shows it's a community on the move in the right direction. Right, right. And some of these investors that we have coming in are um, solid investors in other areas. So they've already done the type of work that they're doing. So for example, we have the Joris family that's been investing on Broadway. And they have successful restaurants and wineries. And they've been investing in Broadway. Um, in fact, Counterpoint Coffee is already open. So they have one of their sons, Max Joris, has a coffee shop slash recording studio on Broadway. And it is really a phenomenal change of the building that they purchased. Um, the upgrades that they did, it's just beautiful. So if you haven't been there, go to the farmer's market, walk over to Counterpoint Coffee, um, and take a peek at what they've done, and just say hello to them. Right across. And buy a coffee. Oh, yeah, for sure. Here's <laughs> coffee. I'm not kidding you. So this, this guy did, he's amazing at what he did. He studied the science of coffee. So he's even filtering his water with a special filtration system. He's got beans that are from certain places. He has them stored just so. It is going to be the best cup of coffee you have ever had. It is just amazing. Um, and, and also, we can't wait to see what they're going to do. They bought a property at 600 Broadway, and they're going to be turning that into a restaurant for Klaus Joris. And we're very excited. They, they submitted the plans to the city, and, and we're excited about them getting um, rehab of that building underway. They're going to have a nice space out in the back, too, so you have a, a gathering spot in the back where you can have outdoor dining. It's just starting to change the whole look and feel of Broadway. When you start to get these places where you can walk by and you see people having fun, um, Other Brother Brewery is going to be coming at the far end of Broadway near Fremont. Um, they've been underway, and they'll have a little beer garden going on in the back. They'll have a whole new inside to the building they're doing. We're just excited about some of these changes. Well, you know, Gloria, if you look at um, Seaside and Del Rey Oaks, and, well, Sand City, Seaside, Del Rey Oaks, they're in a band where there is more sunshine. And if you just look over time, Delray Oaks, Seaside, San City, they're about 10 degrees higher than other places on the peninsula. So it's kind of like its own little banana belt there. It, it comes around and goes Alta Mesa into Monterey. But that's kind of how it, it works. And I, I actually look where my house is. I look across and I see how the sun is in the afternoon on Seaside. And I can be in complete shade uh, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and already putting on a fireplace or a heavy sweater or both 
And I look across and Seaside is just bright, sunny, and it's it's alluring. You want to go over there because you want to still extend your evening hours out where it's warm and and uh, sunny. So I think it's good. People also forget that we're like a connection between nature. So we have um, the National Monument on the east side of us, and then we have the ocean on the other. And you look at it, it's all seaside in between, and all of the changes that are happening in that area to both protect and celebrate the environment, but still have some development going on um, in a responsible way. Um, I think that just makes an exciting opportunity for our city. It gives an exciting opportunity for tourists. Um, they don't always think about coming to Seaside. Monterey is way more famous than us. Pebble Beach, what golfer doesn't know Pebble Beach? You know, but, but Seaside has its own amenities. We have a beautiful golf course up at the top of the hill. People forget about these things, and, and I think we need to celebrate that and, and toot our own horn a little bit more, um, just to remind people that Seaside is fabulous. Yeah, I saw a, uh, I saw <laughs> a gaggle <laughs> of tourists the other day, and they had walked out of the embassy suites and walked across to go to the Starbucks. And I mean, there were 40 of them. It must have been like a whole busload of people oh, yeah. that said, okay, let's, before we get on the bus, let's go over and have coffee. But it was, I was watching, it was like 7.45 in the morning, and I thought, you know, this is exactly how this should work here. It's, right. it's really fabulous. And if you go to Googie Grill in the morning, it is almost completely full of people from other countries. So they're obviously staying, I would guess, uh, at one of the two or three properties that are right around that intersection of Fremont and 218. Mm -hmm. But that's where they go for breakfast. And you can go in there and hear four or five different languages mm -hmm. on just about any given morning. And it's, it's nice. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so complimentary to, to what has already been there to see some of this growth and change going on. Right, and that corner that you mentioned, I'm glad that you mentioned it because that's one of our busiest corners in the city. We get at least 24,000 cars a day going by that spot. By that spot. We're going to be putting up um, a big sign with letters saying Seaside and a seahorse. So we had a gentleman win a design competition and he's now just getting started on constructing his, it's, it's basically a work of art at that corner. So at the corner, corner of Canyon Del Rey and Del Monte, you'll be seeing, um, it'll get closed up because he'll be closing it up so you can't see his work as he constructs it. But when he unveils it, you'll see these big giant letters that are gonna be at least four feet tall saying Seaside, and it's just something fun. And we think the tourists are gonna like doing, you know, like go and get your picture taken by the Seaside or by the Seahorse. Um, it, it's just something that's kind of fun and different that hasn't been done on, on the peninsula, and, and we're happy to be one of the first. No, oh, I love that. Yeah. I think it's good. Hey, yeah. celebrate your success. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what we do. And let people know, you know, that this is who you are. I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I always loved the seahorse. <laughs> that's a controversial thing. I didn't I realize that when I moved here, how controversial a seahorse is. Yeah, no, I've always loved it. I always think it's kind of cool. And when you go other cities, you know, and they paint cows or they paint hearts mm -hmm. or they paint dolphins or whatever, I just think Seaside, if it can move along a little bit, should have one of those uh, things where you paint a seahorse and buy it and put it out in front of your business and celebrate it. We've talked about that. So temporary art is actually a really great way to start bringing art into your community. And I've worked with a lot of art. We have an art and history commission in Seaside, and they've been trying to move things forward. And we also have different things regarding art now that are moving forward um, already. So we have some mural opportunities. So there's a park that we're working on that's going to have a new mural. Um, we have one of our dispensaries is having a design competition right now for a wall on their building. That's a mural competition. Um, we're going to be announcing um, a design mural not a mural, but the uh, utility boxes, so a wrap and a theme on the boxes down on Broadway, so we'll be bringing art in in that way. And we've also been talking to even Sand City to say, like, if we do some temporary art or if we start getting permanent art and, and we create, like, this walking path or walking trail so you can kind of go and see the art across our city and Sand City, what would that look like? How do we partner together on that and get some grants together to start making it exciting for both of those and tie the cities together through art? I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. I, you know, I think it's 
what we all have to just embrace and move forward on. And it does uh, it does transform a city when people start becoming more aware of art and there's less tagging and there's less uh, graffiti because people have something that they're proud of mm -hmm. to show off. Right. The other thing that we found that was fun is people in Seaside, because we're so multicultural, they're ready for bright, colorful art. So we asked them what kind of art they like, and they all voted and ranked things, and they're ready for some bright colors, um, bright pictures, some boldness. So I think Seaside, like you, like you mentioned, we're on the move and things are changing. I, I think this is really a fun time to be at Seaside. You know, uh, I think one of your treasures is Sandra Gray. Mm -hmm. and the way she has just steadfastly supported the arts over the years, and particularly in, in Seaside. And Hal and I try to come to most of the art openings, and she does an amazing job, and it really uses uh, City Hall really well to be able to display so many works. I don't think people realize that City Hall functions as an art gallery. And I actually take my out-of-town guests to City Hall, you know, so I got my little key to get in. So I'll take them in off hours and we'll go and look at art. And it's a great thing to do. Um, City Hall was remodeled fairly recently and so now you're able to walk in an entire circle all the way around City Hall and viewing art. And as we're taping this segment, right now there's student art up. And that's always a good one because you see these young artists who are under um, getting professional guidance in what they're doing. It does not look like student art. And most of the projects are actually for sale. So you can get great projects, um, great pieces of art at a low price during the student art sale. Um, Sandra Gray changes those out about every six weeks. So she has a new um, show coming on, a new theme that she's been working on. And I've heard a rumor that we're booked out like two years. So if you wanted to book art, you have to wait, right? Right? Nobody wow. realizes that. There's a demand for art in Seaside. Who knew? But, but there is, and I'm glad that there is, and I'm glad that people like it, and I'm glad that they're successful, and her shows are always very good. Yeah, they are. And the people should, should watch, and they should go to the kickoff, the opening receptions, because they're well done. It's a lot of energy. You get to talk to the artists. And it's just it's just a nice, nice way to develop that whole uh, creative culture there. And it's there. Mm -hmm. It just needed to be acknowledged and displayed. Right. And I think that gets back to something we were talking about earlier, getting people to participate in government. We need them to realize that government isn't scary. We're not there to create red tape. You know, sometimes we accidentally create red tape. But we really want to partner with people to get things done and doing it through things like art and having performances and having fun with the community is a way to make government a little more approachable. And so that's something that we're talking about how we do it already at City Hall through art. And if we did like the new City Hall up at the top of General Gym and Broadway, what would that look like? How do we get the community to interact and want to come up there and have more fun as well? Yeah, it's a good idea. So let me ask you, um, the Westons have started their uh, business venture on Broadway, and I was not able to go to their uh, opening, and I am so excited to see their work and their educational opportunities in Seaside. And I've not spoken to them of why they selected Seaside, but I'm sure they saw a value there and saw a community that could embrace what they're doing. But that is a huge, huge step up for Seaside and a huge shout out about how important it is to the arts. I think a lot of our investors are seeing the same thing. They're seeing, I think it's like, a hopeful change and, and it's like it's not just hoping it's actually marching towards it, it it's like we're on a path and, and whether you want to or not this city is moving towards a goal and a lot of people want to be a part of it they're choosing to invest um, many different things are underway you know on Broadway so you mentioned one we have developers that have been talking like we had the West Broadway Urban Village plan that was an award-winning plan that was done by staff years ago but we had to kind of be on hold while the economy was recovering. And now that the economy is recovering, we're seeing investors coming, um, and large investors from Southern California, from Northern California, who are looking to 
do five-story buildings and developments. You know, so we're having serious talks with these people. They're, they're approaching our business owners and property owners down on Broadway to start making some of these things happen. So this is no longer just talk and no longer just a plan. It's all starting to gel, and it's really exciting. I think it's a city that's just finally reaching to where it should have been. Well, I see two cities really stepping out in the whole area um, and, and evolving and changing with the uh, dreams and hopes of our future generations. And one is Salinas, and I think one is uh, Seaside. One of them is people that are my age cannot be designing houses and how big the lot should be for people who are in their 20s. They don't want lawnmowers and they don't want things. They want it for their for their exercise on the weekends. They want to be able to go and go to a gym or go hiking or biking or surfing or do something else. They don't want to be in the yard pushing a lawnmower. And so I think, did I want to live in an apartment? Mm -mm. But some people do, and I think we have to be aware of that. The condominiums, apartments, and and places that are more. Um, concise that but then where they can walk down and get their coffee and get their newspaper and talk to people and hook up on somebody else's uh, um, broadband I think all that's important and so it's it's so good to listen to the community and see what movement you're gonna take right so. right well we're hearing and, and when you mention these yards and these houses those are great for a certain segment of the population but what we find is there's a demand, and, and we don't really have it in Seaside right now, for, for apartments, they're studios. So even if it's 450, 600 square feet, maybe one bedroom apartments. On the big side, maybe two bedroom apartments, but not a whole lot of those. And one of the things that we do then is we can capture some of these graduates from CSUMB because they get priced out. You know, when you first graduate from college, you're going to be paying off your loans, and you don't have a lot of income to pay for housing, and housing costs in the peninsula area are just crazy expensive. And so if we can offer housing that's a little more affordable, so when they're getting their first job, that'll help them out. I know that also helps with um, teachers. You know, you look at things like that, we have we are always advertising, MPUSD is always advertising for different teachers. They're having a big push for teachers now. We work with them on what could some of their land look like so they have some surplus properties. How could housing be developed on some of their surplus land to accommodate people at that income level? You know, where you're just getting started out, but you know, you, you don't quite want a house or need a house yet. The biggest problem is where you store your mountain bike, you know? <laughs> I mean, that that's really it. It's like if I have a small condo, you know, a small place, where do I put my mountain bike? You know, so and my barbecue grill. <laughs> right, right. But but people want to be outside. They don't want to be inside. We, we live, this is the blessing of where we live. You step outside your door and you're on vacation, you know? So that's, that's why we put up with all of this, because it is so beautiful, and we all have to remember that. That's good. So don't go away. We'll be back in a second, and uh, we'll continue talking about how Seaside is definitely on the move. Thank you. Mm -hmm.